What's up everybody? We're going to talk about the seven worst weaknesses of the INFJ today. Have you ever wondered about that? Well, it's good you clicked on this video because I'm going to give you the answers. In preparation for this video, I took a gander at Gifts Differing. It, a lot of people ask me, what's a good book to read? I actually want to read a book about Myers-Briggs to learn about it. Gifts Differing is the one you want. It's a great overview of everything, all the types, how it all works, what it all means. Very interesting. Link is in the, in the uh, I've said that phrase like thousands of times and I still get tripped up. It's in the description <laughs> if you want to pick it up for yourself. Oh, and it's worth noting, by the way, that a lot of these are weaknesses for INTJs too because INFJs and INTJs are extremely similar. They both have introverted intuition as their dominant function. And that's where most of these weaknesses come from. The irony is the weaknesses come from the strength. Pack it up, pack it in, let me begin. INFJ weakness number one is that they can get easily detached from reality. And this happens because they are easily sucked into their own inner world. Introverted intuition is a very deep, rich inner world of, you could call it imagination, but it's not quite that. It's really like finding connections between things guessing at the meaning of how things come together. It's very abstract. In a way, it's like trying to look at the whole world and bring it down into one meaning, one pattern. Where is it all going? And INFJs can, for sure, be in the present moment for a little while, but it's not long before they just sink back into their own brain. And the intuition goes into overdrive and they become detached from what's actually happening around them. And it can be good sometimes because if an INFJ gets really, if they have a strong inner vision, they can be very determined and detached from their reality in a good way because it allows them to focus on one thing. But a lot of times that can be a weakness as well because life goes on. <laughs> Life doesn't stop because you wanted to focus on something. Number two is that INFJs are too reliant on inspiration in a sense, and they don't want to do tedious work. They don't want to do rote routine grunt work. This is because INFJs like to overplan stuff. They, and they overplan because they're trying to avoid the work. So they're like, if I can just think about, you know, if I can get an inspiration, instead of like just immediately starting to work toward it or even working without full inspiration, I have to wait for it all to come together in my mind, for the intuition to put it all together, to piece it all together. So as an example, let's say that we have an INFJ who's a novelist. Now novel writing is tedious. You have to like write a lot of, <laughs> a lot of words and it takes a while. So the, don't take these examples totally literally, like an INFJ novelist could do whatever, but just to illustrate this particular point, an INFJ who's trying to write a novel might wait years, have the idea and be like, that's a great idea, I'm inspired, but then just let that stew, let that marinate for a long time before ever writing it because they don't want to start doing something if it's going to be a lot of kind of grunt work where they're grinding to figure things out along the way. So they'll wait until it all comes together and is galvanized, if you will, and then just write it as fast as possible once it's fully formed in their mind. A lot of it is because they don't want to be surprised, the INFJs, by tedious things along the way and they don't want to have to deal with it. So they want to work it out in advance to skip over that. You'll notice intuitives like to skip over things. <laughs> That's sort of like their thing. Number three is that INFJs can be stubborn. This is one that doesn't get brought up a whole heck of a lot. Here's how the stubbornness can play out is that INFJs will create kind of a vision where they see things going. The introverted intuition is very focused on the future because it's trying to guess what's going to happen next and project and be like, this is how things have gone in the past. This is the pattern. This is how it's going to go in the future, etc. So when they have that particular uh, intuition, that, that vision of where things are going, they don't want to listen to other people who contradict that. And that in part is because it's introverted. So it's 
subjective, like things that are introverted are focused inward on the self. And so INFJs have a certain loyalty to that. They don't want to betray their own inner guidance where the intuition is saying things are going. And there's also a fear aspect because if someone else says, oh, well, it's actually going this other way, you should do this other thing, the INFJ will be like, going back to the last point, INFJs will be like, I worked it out for myself to skip over this, the tedium and the chaos that could come about from not planning enough. So if I go with this other person's thing, then I'm opening myself up to that. And so that, that can be a weakness though, because INFJs aren't always right. I think that's a common misconception. The INFJs, I see it in the comments, it's like, oh, my intuition told me this. Intuition, is, it doesn't mean it's right. It just means that it's really a guess. Intuition might be predictive, that doesn't mean it's right. Nostradamus predicted stuff. He wasn't right. Or was he? Why don't we pause briefly to see if YouTube would like to show a commercial. Thanks for sitting through that, and if you're enjoying yourself, hit the like button and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. I'm just gonna leave it in. I'm gonna leave in me stumbling over words and struggling with the English language. The number four weakness of the INFJ is that they can struggle to adequately express themselves. This can be in general an NF type thing. All the NF types will struggle a bit to be understood. And that is because NF, the NF way of communicating, doesn't matter what NF type you are, and you can hear it when you listen for it, it's like the opposite of clear. Whenever you hear someone talking about something and that you can tell they know what they mean and you can sort of figure it out. Well, here's a good example, me. <laughs> Watch a lot of my videos where I'm talking about INFJ stuff. There's like a, a obvious lack of concrete examples of things. And I worked in this script in particular, in this video, to give some examples so that I could like fight that lack of clarity. Examples are good. NFs tend not to give them. They talk in abstract. They talk about feelings. They, you know, so it's not clear, factual. It's not factual. It's not logical. It doesn't make sense to a lot of people. The other side of that is that because introverted intuition in particular is subjective, that means it might not make sense to other people, even if they could explain it in a way. Might not, what an INFJ thinks like what their intuition is telling them might not make sense to anyone else except that INFJ. Might not even make sense to other INFJs. So expressing themselves and what's going on inside, that, that's a major weakness. Number five is that INFJs struggle to enjoy the present moment, to, to live in the now. And it's because, as I mentioned before, Intuition is always projecting out into the future. Intuition is trying to guess what happens next. The INFJs see the world as not so much what's happening now, but what will happen. And so instead of enjoying the present moment right now, they're projecting, you know, five years into the future or whatever. That one's pretty self-explanatory. So I think we'll just move on. I think a lot of humans generally have issues with being in the present, but INFJs in particular. Number six is that INFJs can be overly cautious. And a lot of times this goes back to that planning I talked about. And this is because they feel the responsibility to fully comprehend something before they undertake it. And this could be something big, could be something small too. This cautiousness comes from what I mentioned before of not wanting to be surprised, INFJs don't like to be surprised, by stuff coming out of the woodwork, of details they didn't expect. So like I said, it could be a big thing or it could be a small thing, like an INFJ, here's a silly example, if they're going to a new restaurant, might spend a lot of time looking up reviews to see how other people felt about their experience, might look at the menu to make sure that they, you know, they comprehend everything there and don't have to read a menu on the spot, <laughs> might research where they're going to park, like all this stuff to over plan before even getting there. And the number seven one, which is big 
and which is, you know, the kind of thing that is going to catch a lot of people off guard, and I hinted at it before, that when an INFJ's intuition is wrong, it really will catch them off guard and could really bite them in the butt. So intuitives like to jump ahead all the time. They like to guess at what's going to happen rather than following the actual sequence of events. And INFJs and INTJs are the worst, I think. Well, you, you could argue other types too, but they're pretty bad because it's their dominant function. So they're always, they're relying on that way more than they're relying on looking at the facts and what's actually happened. They're like, oh, I get this. I'm jumping ahead to the end. And like I said before, the intuition isn't always right. It's right enough that they rely on it. And because it's their dominant function, the INFJs will get a little bit cocky. They'll be like, I got this. I do this all the time. I don't even think about it. And then one day they guess wrong. They jump ahead, but they didn't anticipate all something happening or something comes out of nowhere. Some chaos happens. And they're like, it causes big problems. There are other types. If you contrast this with, say, an ENFJ who isn't dominant with introverted intuition but has it as their second function, they still will plan, they still will guess and jump ahead. But when something kind of comes out of nowhere and surprises them and they guess wrong, they are easier, they have an easier time with adjusting on the fly and handling it. And it's like, okay. That was not so great, but I dealt with it. I'm not too afraid of that happening again. Let's just keep going. INFJs, though, that'll like wipe them out. It's close to being traumatizing. It's going to make you not want to do it again. It's going to make you think what your whole world is going to come crashing down in a sense. This is the biggest thing I, the biggest piece of advice I have for INFJs and INTJs is realize your intuition, it, you, that's something that you're, relying on a lot and it's not always going to pan out for you. So you need to be able to handle the present moment, the everyday details, the facts, reality in the concrete physical world. You have to deal, learn to deal with surprises and going into situations with a plan that isn't, you know, uh, obsessively thought through. One more thing, if you didn't know, I have an email list where I send out a word of the week on Monday mornings, just something for you to chew on, maybe give you a little inspiration, feed that intuition, uh, help you get closer to achieving your goals. The link is infj.me slash fun because we have fun over there. It's also a great way if you sign up for the emails to get information on asking me questions directly and get my personal opinion on stuff about personality type, etc. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay cool and attractive.